so much to our ICT. Good morning, Principal and Vice Chancellor, Prof. Linkabula, Vice Principal present here, Honorable Guest, Dignitaries, Ladies and Gentlemen, UWF welcomes you and we hope you enjoy this virtual experience from the comfort of your home and other various locations. My name is Tembegandulim Papama from the Gauteng region. I'll be directing this program together with Ms. Kidiboni Tancha, UWF ESCO member from Midlands region. Before we proceed with this program, may we observe a moment of silence to remember those who passed on due to COVID-19. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for observing the moment of silence. As the world grapples with these challenges posed by COVID-19 pandemic, we remember all the women across the world, those who are in the front line of this battle, and those of us who have lost family members and friends to this disease. This event is hosted by UWF in collaboration with SAWID, led by Meto Gumbumlana. Our theme for 2021, ladies and gentlemen, is generation equality, realizing women's right for an equal future. The other sub themes are as follows, no women left behind, as we strive for total liberation. Other sub theme is promoting human rights in the age of COVID-19, as we celebrate the legend Umam Shalot Makaeke. Please note that this event will be recorded. The recording will be made available to the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, please note that our cameras as program directors for today will be switched off because we have a sign language interpreter, Umme Sofi Mabaso, from UNISA Aquit, just to ensure that we are inclusive. Please note that we have a question and answer session towards the end of the program. Can the audience please pose their questions and comment there? I now call Dr. Vuyega Zisikata, UWF ESCO member, to welcome our guest. Over to you, Ms. Sikata. A program director, principal and vice principal, Prof. Buleng Linkabula, vice principals present here, Prof. McKay, Prof. Meiwa, leaders from regions and colleges, distinguished guests from South African Women in Dialogue chairperson, Ms. Tokompumluana and her entourage, Salka women 
represented by Ms. Flora Maboa Boltman, UWF 2021 nominees and winners and other stakeholders who joined us this morning. Let me take this selective and singular moment to welcome all the distinguished women, men, academia, our esteemed guests, students and members of the fourth estate that are virtually connected in this hero, hero historic event. The UNISA annual memorial lecture and our UNISA Women of the Year Awards. At UNISA, on an annual basis, we commemorate the life of this phenomenal woman who left an indelible mark on every person whose life she had touched. Indeed, we are gathered here today with our hearts deeply etched and soaked by the reality that times are tough and times are unpredictable as the globe is engulfed by a deadly pandemic. But albeit such catastrophic life, we still praise God that we are still alive. Allow me therefore to invite you to continue praying for the families of all our departed colleagues, students and members of society due to the coronavirus that is ravaging not only our country, but the entire world. On a positive note, 2021 is a remarkable year. 150th anniversary of Mama Makleke, Charlotte, mother of black freedom in South Africa, our beacon of hope would be celebrating her milestone had she lived this Uh, good morning again, colleagues. As I have been introduced, my name is Kiribone Tansa. Uh, it seems like we have a technical connection issue with Dr. Sigata. Um, from what she has said, I thank you, May Dr. Sigata, for those words of welcome and the wisdom that you shared with us this morning and to ensure our guests that our dogs, they have been put in their place. I will now uh, introduce our poet, Miss Kate Mafate. May Kate, the stage is yours to come and share with our participants and our guests what you have prepared for this event. Over to you, May. Switch on your mic. Please switch on your mic.
Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to request uh, Mekate to please switch on the mic. We can see she's saying something, but it's not audible. Can you please switch on the mic, uh, Kate, and proceed with your poem, please? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have had a technical challenge. Uh, as we continue with our program, uh, we battled to hear Miss Kate Mafate. Uh, before we proceed with the next speaker, I would like to remind you that you can follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at UNISA underscore UWF. Instagram account is at UNISA UWF. Our Facebook page is UNISA Women's Forum. The hashtag for today's event is FEM Lecture 2021. I will now proceed with the program to introduce Ms. Martha Mella, Secretariat of SAWIT, for reading of the two biographies. Ms. Martha Mella, over to you, ma'am. Mathamela, the floor is yours, ma'am. You can proceed. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Can yes, you hear me? Yes, I can me? hear you very well. I can hear you very well. Thank you, you very proceed. much. Thank you. Um, sorry, I missed you for a second. It's Mama Flora who's going first, right? Yes, you may proceed. Thank you. Um, Councillor Flora Mabua Boltman has been an activist and a former Sassel employee for 26 years. Councillor Boltman is a former union activist who served as a shop steward in the petroleum sector working for Sassel in Secunda. Her biography just reminds us how much work goes into the work that women do to get to positions of leadership. She served as a deputy president of the Chemical Energy, Paper Printing, Wood and Allied Workers Union from 2005 to 2006. She participated in various community structures and was leading as the branch secretary for four terms. She served in her organization, the ANC, in her region, the Gertzi Bande, since 2004 to now. And she was also a speaker at Gertzi Bande district municipalities and has been a councillor for 20 years. She was elected as the National Executive Committee NEC member at the Salgas National Members Assembly in 2006, where she chaired the Community Development Working Group. Councillor Boltman became the Salgas Deputy President under the leadership of Councillor Tabo Magnoni, and she also served as a member of the Provincial Executive Committee, the PEC. She has been a member of the, of the Salga Women's Commission since its inception, 
And uh, she's also the proud founder of her own foundation called the Flora Mabua Boltman Development Foundation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Madam, for reading that biography. You can proceed with the next biography so that when they start, they start together. Thank you so much. Uh, you may introduce another speaker. You are on mute. And I was on mute. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'll start right away. Mrs. Nandisile Tokumpulwana is the chairperson of the South African Women in Dialogue Trust. She's also a member in the boards of various other organizations, including WIPOLD, NGO Trust, the Foundation for Human Rights, and until recently, a board member in Gender Links. She was, until a few years ago, the Deputy Chairperson of the Commission for Gender Equality. She holds education degrees from the University of South Africa and the University of Natal, Peter Maritzburg. Ms. Mpumluana was awarded an MA in the fields of Curriculum Development and Teacher Education by Michigan State University in the United States. Her professional career has focused largely on teaching and promotion of education. Her commitment to justice, especially on political human children and women's rights and empowerment has driven her activism. She was a member of the Black Consciousness Movement alongside Steve Biko and has been very active in church and NGO activities since her student activism years of the 1970s. Um, thank you. I, she's also previously chaired the World Council of Churches Women's Committee and the South African Council of Churches Women's Working Group. And she's been active in publishing as both author and editor. Mrs. Mpumluana worked at the Center for Scientific Development at the Human Sciences Research Council, promoting research by women in higher education. She has served as a member of the Council of the University of Pretoria and other boards, including the Independent Development Trust and the Women's Development Foundation. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Over to you, Meflo Ramabua, Boltman. The stage is yours. Thank you very much, uh, leadership. Uh, I am driving to the meeting. Uh, I just stopped so that I can speak. And apologies that I will also switch my mic off uh, because I'm at the mountainous area. Uh, greetings to the leadership there. Uh, greetings, Mam Toko. Uh, greetings to you, Program Director. Apologies, I should have started uh, with you. But uh, Mate, thank you very much for the introduction. I greet everybody there, all protocols observed. It is an honor and a privilege to be part of this uh, important occasion today and to speak under the sub theme no woman left behind as we strive for total liberation. And as we commemorate our legend, May Charlotte Makeke, let me extend my wishes for a happy Women's Month to all the women and girls of our country as we celebrate and honor women heroines who paved the way before us. We affirm today that one of the greatest lessons we take from our predecessors is to ensure that no woman is left behind. Um, allow me, Program Director, to indicate that South African women across racial lines have been the source of courage for the entire community in the struggle of democracy. I want to quote something that uh, President Beggy wrote in his book where uh, uh, that was in his book of uh, 2004. I will open quote. The government in our country could ever claim 
let me repeat, no government in our country could ever claim to represent the will of the people if it failed to address the central task of emancipation of women in all its elements. And that includes the government we are privileged to lead, close quote. And that is how we begin to achieve equality, uh, leadership and participant in this uh, 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 webinar. Having women in significant positions is only where change begins. It is not the end. The mistake we make is when we think that this short term gains is where equality is won. To reach equality, we need deep generational and mindset shift. Structures need to be broken and uh, uh, rebuilt so that our, our central societal um, apologies, I, I My network is discouraging me here to continue, but uh, apologies. Let me re repeat to say to reach equality, we need a deep generational and mindset shifts. Structures need to be broken down and rebuilt so that our societal institutions and organizations reflect and are inclusive of the rights values and aspirations of women. To do that, we need more young women and girls in these roles, in these conference spaces. Uh, uh, yesterday in the meeting where I was, there was a, a, a young woman who spoke and, you know, she asked a question and she, she said, who are we talking to on the webinar? or on the webinars that we have, who are we actually talking to? How do we make sure that all that we are planning for people, it reaches those people? She spoke about rural, she spoke about a number of uh, uh, people that we, 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 we need to reach out to. And today I'm, I'm also saying in this conference spaces, in every institution, an organization at every decision making table. We need to have these people. We need to reach out to them. We need our voices, experiences and expertise to be present in the democratic life of this nation. That is our role as a collective in ensuring uh, 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 that women are, are, are advancing their gender equality roles uh, as women and we must ensure that they are being empowered. And what is it that we'll make sure of uh, to have them lifted up and make sure that they are, they, they are empowered? We need to, amongst others, do the following. And uh, it is subject to all that you might uh, want to bring in and, 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 and all the information that might be more than this. But together, we can restructure our institutions from the inside and our societal fabric from the ground up and we can make governments and decision makers accountable. Our women's voice or voices have to be at the forefront and center of policy planning and design. And we need serious investment in, uh, uh, in implementation. We need to revive, we need to establish we need to strengthen and support women and gender structures that advocates for women's representation and participation in the decision making, both in the political and administrative positions. Today we have a PEC sitting, the extended one, that will be deciding on, on, on how do we structure our government, how do we uh, make sure that we put women in structures. And if we miss this opportunity today, I'm telling you, it will be difficult to, to, to get back to this. So we, we really have to represent women at all sectors. And from this time up, we need to make sure that women are represented in all this, the, the, the structures. We need to advocate or we need to both in the political and administration we, we, we must engage both males and, 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 and females equally. 
we need to be allies with our partners. The structures should be able to create an enabling environment to lead the allocation of adequate uh, uh, resources. We need to enforce accountability. You know, uh, structures must be able to account and say, we have this number of women in, in positions, and these are women that we 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 advocated so that they 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 go up the ladder. So we 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 need to be guarding that jealously uh, for us to 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 to, to rise up with them. Like Mama Makeke, somebody met uh, Mabatu yesterday when she was quoting a, a quotation from Mama Makeke to say. If you go up, you have to take some women with you. So we will have to, 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 to repeat that this morning. We need to monitor and evaluate the implementation of programs. There are programs and these programs that are in place for women. Uh, we need not to leave them to, to be there in paper, but we need to monitor and we need to push that they are implemented. We need to advocate and support programs for women empowerment within our various institutions and organizations. We need to develop programs aimed at assisting and empowering women. SALGA has launched the local government women leadership program. We launched it uh, in 2020. It is driven by the Nelson Mandela School of Leadership in the University of Cape Town, and they are in partnership with Zinande Leadership Institute. The program is designed for female leaders politically and administratively, as I indicated earlier. It is aimed at empowering and equipping women councillors and managers at local government level with the requisite skills and competencies. The program provides skills enhancement to women in leadership and management roles in council and local government divisions through the following interventions. We 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 talking training and coaching, mentoring, leadership exposure through a series of online seminars or webinars. We are a, a we talking in terms of a mentorship program both formally and informally that needs to be developed as a policy for women leadership that must continue and we must continue to support it. Educational uh, mentoring and peer learning to retain women leadership positions and to bring in new ones. And the new ones that we're bringing in, we must hold them by hand and mentor them and walk them or walk with them linked to a compulsory program to mentor young women and prepare them for leadership is a prospect worth considering. Building and maintaining networks of women leaders in local government, locally, nationally, regionally and globally as sharing and learning platforms for women leaders in another uh, consideration. The pandemic has also exacerbated the inequalities and discrimination that women experience in every sphere. We have to transform society so that no woman, young or old, experiences poverty, racism, violence, discrimination or exclusion. And all women can realize their full economic, social and political rights in society. Evidence across sectors, including economic planning and emergency uh, response, demonstrates unquestionably that uh, uh, policies that do not consult women or include them in decision making are simply less effective and can even do harm. Beyond individual women, women, uh, women organizations who are often on the front line of response in the communities should also be represented and supported. Uh, and we need to get to that space and, and, and really support those women because I was listening to the debate on SAFM where Ntate uh, 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 Popo was responding to some issues that he was asked. You know, we need to, to look at the issue of women 
doors uh, at the same time and make sure that they are protected, especially those who are, are, are women, because we experience a number of uh, uh, issues that are not favoring women. And some women are afraid to come forth because of once you blow a whistle, you, you are exposed to danger. Now, as the SWC or Salga Women's Commission, we are committed to be part of ensuring that no woman is left behind. We value this opportunity to work with other linked minded, uh, like minded organizations and all those who want a more equal society for women. We want to achieve this vision together. And I have a strong belief that united we will really achieve our, our vision of empowering women in all the sectors of life. Uh, thank you very much, Program Director, and thank you for allowing me to switch my mic, uh, my, my video off. Thank you very much. Malibongwe. Mike is off, Kidiboni. Okay, Th thank you. Thank you, colleague. Uh, indeed, women from all racial lines are faced with different struggles. I now call on Metoko uh, Mpumlwana. Metoko. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. I hope others can hear you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm on a cell phone. My gadget almost uh, let me down this morning. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I will. Uh, I am here um, representing South African women in dialogue, uh, celebrating with you. Uh, so I would like to thank you, Program Director. Uh, I would like also to I acknowledge the vice principal. Uh, um, I would like to acknowledge uh, the, the, the chair of SALGA, uh, the chair of uh, Women's Forum, and uh, all the distinguished brothers and sisters who are here online. Uh, what a pity that we can't really celebrate physically, but that time will come. We would like to thank you for this uh, opportunity to to contribute to the memory of great women of South Africa. In particular, today, Feroza Adam, but would like to also say in the, in the year, Charlotte McCracken and the 20,000 women of 1956. And all the women who have been, who are, and those who are to be. Malibongo ikamala makoskas. I'm aware that I only have 10 minutes to make my comments and uh, I've spent the week chopping and changing and I hope I'll keep to the 10 minutes. We appreciate our relationship with you, Lisa, and are very grateful that uh, we are sharing this platform with you and, uh, and tomorrow you will be sharing this platform with us because of our MOU that we have signed since, since 2016. And uh, it's a six year relationship where we have mutually benefited uh, as, as, uh, as Sawit. We have uh, received a lot of support from uh, UNISA and thank you VC for continuing in that tradition. We congratulate you VC, uh, Dr. Linka Bula. Uh, may your light shine and uh, and we and so that you can take this institution to the next level sisters and brothers and fellow south african this month of august is about memory memory keeps us going it educates us it warns us it rolls models the choices we should make gives it give, gives us a sense of history and legacy in short, memory teaches us that we will arrive, we will do something, we will leave for others to take all over. We should never fool ourselves into believing that we are the be all and the end all. And that's a humbling admission. 
Memory allows us to celebrate, to recognize uh, sacrifices made by those who have gone and those who are still alive. In a book entitled Fatima Mia, Memories of Love and Struggle, Winnie Mandela stresses the importance of recording memory in recognition of what I call sheroes. She decries the fact that I quote, Ours is still a patriarchal society in which men are more recognized than women. And she adds, I quote, I hope that we will correct that situation with all our might as women. And so I thank UNISA Women's Forum for memorializing Feroza Adam. This 2021, as my uh, uh, colleague, uh, the program director and my colleague has said uh, from Salga, happens at the worst of time in South Africa. Take it from an old woman born in the 50s who has experienced the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the pre-90s, the memorable, the memorable 1994, the turn of the millennium, the 2000, a woman who has lived through many decades and conferences of women, uh, the Beijing, the national coalition processes, the MDGs, the SDGs, the AU and SADAC protocol, yo, the struggle for justice for women is long and it hasn't stopped, we're still at it. On another sad note, of course, we are here at a time, if we are to tell the truth, when some Indian family came to our shores, they wrecked havoc, they disrespected our nation, they left us with more than 50 billion rand. They left with more than 50 billion rands of our money. And for us as citizens to pay the price now. Frankly, I would like to quote what Charles Dickens says in the tale of two cities. I quote, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times, the age of wisdom the age of foolishness, the epoch of belief, the epoch of incredulity, the season of light, the season of darkness, the spring of hope, and the winter of despair. Never did I ever imagine that in addition, we will have a, 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 a pandemic that will leave us with orphans, with widows, and spouses in disbelief. As if that's not enough, our country in July was in flames, my people behaving like it's a movie, entering shops, taking stuff, and leaving a trail of shops and places in flames. As a uh, Someone said at a funeral, our country needs help, I quote. And Wabilong has a, a book that is entitled Nation on the Couch. He says, we need to understand our country. It is a nation that needs to go on the couch. As a psychoanalyst, that's what he, they do. They take us on their couches. And he says, we need to break the code of, and I add, of self-destructive antisocial behavior. Despite all of these, I must say, we are living in very, very uh, challenging times, but we are people of hope. So who gives us, my title is, who gives us this hope? People like a uh, Feroza give us hope. Feroza, a young woman born in 1961, says to us, we can't step back. We must live in hope. The women of 1956 say the same. They lived through difficult times, 
they were our hope. We live in their in their memory legacy, but they are also our pioneer families and generation equality. Those who built the women's movement with Charlotte Makrege as well for justice. And this is what Saweed is all about. Rosa, as a young girl also taught, had a taste of what the black consciousness calls self-love, that we should love who we are, our blackness, if you're black, whoever you are, and refuse to be oppressed. And so Sawidians made that choice to love their country, love their people, to refuse to be oppressed, to be part of the solution. 2003, a thousand women came together at the University of, uh, of Pretoria, and they identified poverty as their core of what they thought was dehumanizing the majority women and black people. And so they said, we are the ones we have been waiting for. So we are here today to celebrate with you, women of UNISA, because we believe you are Saudians. We are the ones we have been waiting for. And women of Saud believe that there are solutions to the program, to the problems that we have, but that those solutions are not with government, but they are also with us as women in families. What is our vision? We said we are united in our diversity and we act together. We don't apologize for, for our diversity and we actually embrace it. We want to participate in, uh, through dialogue in particular, bringing together and talking and connecting people um, through all the through dialogue at regional, national, continental, and international. So that uh, Saudians are all over. Uh, we believe. We believe that uh, women's rights are human rights. Our objectives are build social cohesion, have creative dialogues, build leadership, uh, promote Pan-African women's solidarity, uh, 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 have supporting and continental movement, work in communities to have strategies to fight poverty and support AU, NEPAT and ARPM. And to this end, make sure there's money to do that. As Feroza uh, Adams was young, and gave herself. We promote voluntarism. We say to people, a, as one poem by Ruby Cow says, I thank the universe for, for taking everything it has, uh, for taking everything it has taken and giving me everything that I give to others. So give to those who have nothing to give to you. That's who we are. We carry the burden of the future because we believe uh, the burden of patriarchy is hurtful to all of us and is painful and we must break the cycle of patriarchy. We stand for those who are heroes of truth and who are fearless, the Ferozas, the Charlotte McLeggers. We want to build a society that is different, that is resilient, that is made up of a generation that believes in equality. We join all others in South Africa who want to reconstruct a socio-economic political system that restores human dignity and equality, regardless of who you are so that you can be cre creative. As Saudians, we believe in education strongly, and we believe that young people must innovate, must be creative, must have skills, 
so that they are self-reliant and continuously uh, have quest for knowledge and more no knowledge. As a weed, we promote early childhood education. We are quite mindful that uh, there are people who have different uh, uh, feelings about early childhood education, but we believe that the first thousand days of a child build and build a nation of secure citizens. We cannot enter only at higher education. We have to start at early childhood education. So we appeal for UNISA to be partners in that journey. We also are mindful that to build citizens, we have to build strong families. By families, we're not, we don't necessarily mean mother, father, because by 2011, the reality is, was that state essay says 69% of children do not have their biological fathers. So investment in women and in women-led families means we are investing in those children who, who live only with their mothers who are probably also working. So how can we support those families? With this COVID, as we, we had a study that we did. Remember, I said we believe in fighting a poverty. We had a study that was commissioned by Dr. Vio Masati on behalf of Sawid. Uh, the, the, the study was titled Vulnerability and Indigence Assessment in South Africa. The idea was just to check under COVID how are families doing? How is vulnerability uh, exposing people? Because we were locked in. You will remember the outcome of the study, which we have shared with you, uh, or we can share further with you, told us that uh, vulnerability, people who were vulnerable, were, uh, were exposed to a lot of poverty. But I would like to add also GBV and femicide. And this morning, there's a conversation about teen pregnancy, where they are saying, just in Houghton alone, there are more than 10,000 uh, pregnant people. And you can see, you can see that under COVID, maybe some children stuck at home found themselves having to be uh, uh, abused by uh, people they lived with. So we believe in education. We also believe in higher education. I want you to know that we believe in higher education, especially in the generation of knowledge and merging indigenous knowledge with, with Western knowledge so that people can exchange information. We hope that our relationship with you continues to do that, and that the innovators in the forum will be able to assist us with it. Family-based development model is the last thing I'm going to talk about. We developed a model, and I must say also UNISA participated. And the model was based on how you can enter a family in order to break the cycle of poverty. We believe that model works and uh, we can share it further and would like your support in, 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 in this approach as we try to lobby government to adopt family-based uh, uh, development. And so as I end, I believe that I want to stress that we need to build active, empathetic, critical, and sharing citizens who want to bring out a society where every child and every person believe that they belong. There is a book written by Avo Chipkin who says, do South Africans exist? Because we can see that Recent events show us that there is no common identity. The majority feel alienated. And therefore, 
as I conclude, I would like to urge us as a University of South Africa, as academics, as workers at UNISA to work together in this journey of building the generation equality. And I would like on behalf of Saweed to congratulate those members of the uh, Women's Forum who today are being acknowledged for being seeds of, of hope and, and having programs that are giving hope to our society. We will also memorialize them in the future and remember that they did something good for society. And so in their small spaces, we thank you for your work and congratulations and thank you very much. Halala, halala, malibongwe, malibongwe, kamala makoskazi. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mama. Thank you so much. But first, I would like to thank Umamu Flora Balkman for the insightful presentation. We wish her all the best as she continue advocating on various issues that are aimed at empowering women. Thanks again, Mam Togompumlane, for giving us a Sawit, what Sawit is doing in promoting agenda of women and their rights. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for the comments and questions on the chat. I see you are busy there. Kidiboni will be reading these uh, questions during the questions and answer session. Before I introduce our entertainers for today, I would like to acknowledge you, Mam Zanelembegi, who has joined us. Uh, Mam Zanelembegi is a former first lady of the Republic of South Africa. You are welcome, Mama. Thank you so much for joining us. Now to entertain us, we've got a vibrant young woman, Miss Kate Mafade and Dr. Tobejana, who will both be leading us to the introduction of the keynote address. Dr. Mapola Tobejana is a senior lecturer in the Department of Inclusive Education and an artist who's featured on Rhythm City as Mama Dike Lady. The stage is yours, um, Kate Mafate, who must be followed shortly by Dr. Tobejane. Over to you, Kate. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Program Director, thank you for this opportunity. Honorable guest, I welcome you. Um, to the UNISA mothers and leaders, I give standing ovation and warm and warm, warm, the warmest heart greetings. Uh, Professor Pule Lankabula, our mother, I greet you. To the Saweed Women Forum, I greet you. It's greatly an honor. Prof McKay, you are highly acknowledged. Prof Meiwa, you are highly acknowledged. To all the women across the world, to all the women across the African skies, I greet you. My humbly greeting goes to all the Unisians women that are in this platform and outside this platform that I want to say to you, you are highly recognized with your hard work. It doesn't matter where you can be or what work who are you delegate are you are delegate are delegated to you are truly appreciated i have written a piece uh, regarding the invitation and i hope my art will touch your heart as i deliberate my art before i do that i would like to introduce myself my name is kate shadow Sakwa Bilani, Kisitlo Holo Sakwa Hare, Kimuradi, Wali Tebele, Wali Kwankwana, Kele Toka Komoke Jamutu. I am my father's daughter. Thank you. The poem that I'm going to recite to you today, as the universe borrowed me these words, it is stated the rock of foundation. Haki Fetula Gasiswana Kerekilije Lamutheo, Mother Ferosa. 
Dust these seasons called for grace. New era of change gave life to braise. New moon glaze with blaze. All applauding the azure blue skies you have. The pure soul humanity poured to glow. Oh, only your name defined green stone. Lejwe Lamuteo, you feroza. The sand and the koi couldn't adhere better. As all scrolls of justice and equality will be awakened to Ben. Just like the blue ivy flower grow to flourish and to desolate, you did that to serve the nation with delicacy of truth. Diligence in your warm face, you roar the echo of rage with gauge, calling advocation of human peace. Wow, time indeed light the spark of radiance you blazed. Quaking and shaking the white bearded bold man with kindness. Wow, your embryonic sack of all tortured and scarred soul you embraced. Balanced as in your vanity. Torture made you raw and rody. Pouring your majestic honor in humanity and kindness, still embroidering the form of goodness to cause. Oh, that rusty end that ended your being, but still your voice still called and still to be called and yet it's been calling. The feisty core, the fierce force of trivility you carried, still the new moon graced with grace. Dusty seasons called for glaze when the door of, oh, when the door of heaven opens. You back home to the father that called you to the universe to blaze. Green stone, your name is called Feroza. Lejuela Muteo, you are. The poet has spoken. I thank you. Mudumo watsadi wa kwa ala uteoga taba. Nakaya la picho ya vagori linjula mushate lichuile. Matari abofa di noka akapa di tito. At separe la naka masong ancha na sai nong awibi di chemato. Maharebe kadi tola melora. A emelela are chielala. Koshaya rovelwa. Mulla echa iloti fela wagori. Realekana. Ufikili. Woseba vorela mapadi ya uvinelwa. Kase rorotla la madi. Le papata la tiba di tebe. Le roi la roule la rodi. Mouropa wa tape la siatla. Va sadi va sake la vari. Ay, ay, ay. Roba mon loco ya va se casabona. Haripani ya fele la kimano. Kamoraru, vaso madisoro fa se vare. Radi iwe, radi iwe maholela. I am 
a nobody. Just a nobody. After nine months, a nobody delivered somebody to this world. But for more than 19 decades, somebody turned his back on just but a nobody. For nine months, a nobody provided somebody with a shelter in this world. But for more than 19 decades, somebody dashed and rushed just but a nobody out of this world. A nobody was reduced to a passive being at the mercy of somebody in this world. The same world, the so-called nobody gave meaning. The same world, a nobody has worked and decorated with her bare hands, bare hands that are today regarded as infertile, unfruitful and unproductive simply because a nobody lacks the physical strength that was seen then as an attribute for survival and success an attribute needed then to lead and defeat the enemy of the times which is today's world no longer an attribute worth celebrating today's world that needs creative, innovative, talented, and the intelligent mind of a nobody. Rugged and dirty, a nobody matches the street, plunged in the dead world, the world of invisible blood, shame, pain, and hurt. The world of humiliation and torture of a nobody. A nobody lives in the dead world of dust. Dust filled with spines. Dust filled with barbs. Dust filled with toxic acid and pepper spray. Its sprinkle fills a nobody in the whole world with anger, with power, with might, and with terror. All looks gloom, all sounds doom, all remain still, but yet in motion, somebody is laughing and tormenting, tormenting the being of being a nobody. Husbands and communities are taught how to treat a nobody. Employers and CEOs are taught what a nobody is. Rubbish that stinks, rubbish that deserves mediocrity, rubbish that deserves to be exploited, rubbish that deserves to be used as an object of abuse, rubbish can, that can bear the unbearable and accept the unacceptable simply because of being a nobody, just a nobody. On a mountain hill, a nobody is standing, looking at the doors of heaven, asking questions and seeking advices, checking for the right commandment, the commandment that justifies the humiliation and torture a nobody is faced with. With her belly, a nobody is gliding smoothly, looking for answers in the ancestral graves. The inscription on the nobody's forehead reads, they see me as a nobody, just but a nobody. A nobody leads the way and forge a go ahead, a go ahead to engage in the struggle for freedom and wipe the tears of an outcry. An outcry of a nobody is whispering. A humble cry for dignity and respect. A humble cry for integrity and integration. A humble cry for equality. Simply because 
Ain't nobody is able to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. The time is now. Ain't nobody is unstoppable. For so long, ain't nobody was made to look bled. The time is now. Ain't nobody is unstoppable. Low park spots can no longer be hidden. With confidence and assurance, ain't nobody matches the streets of the world. With the sounds of the drum and the fists of equality raised up high. With pride, ain't nobody calls out. Hey, somebody, come closer. Ain't nobody wants to tell you, somebody, about everybody. Who is a nobody? Just but a nobody who can save everybody, including you, somebody. With laughter and ululations, a nobody yells, hey, somebody, come nearer. I want to tell you, somebody, about anybody who is a nobody, just but a nobody who can save anybody, including you, somebody. With pride, and nobody is calling out. No woman will be left behind. The future belongs to all of us. The future belongs to a nobody, a somebody, everybody, anybody who is a nobody, just bad, a nobody. Wow, wow. Thank you and thank you and thank you. Halala, halala. Uh, Kinniti, uh, thank you, May Kate Mafate and uh, May Dr. Mapola Tobejani for the renditions. Uh, I would like to encourage all of us that in the midst of all as women that we are facing, let's be encouraged by the words of Maya Angelou when she says, you will face many defeats in your life, but never let yourself be defeated. I will now call upon uh, Prof. Veronica McKay, the Vice Principal Teaching and Learning uh, Community Engagements and Student Support to introduce our, honor, our honorable keynote speakers. Prof. McKay, are you ready? The stage is yours. I'm ready I'm and, and um, greetings to everyone. I will put the camera off now. Um, and what a magnificent rendition we've just had. So thank you, Program Director. VC um, colleagues and friends, it is my honor today to introduce two of our very esteemed keynote speakers. Both of them are phenomenal women. Both has ma have made us proud as women and both have made a significant contribution to the broad women's struggles and for women's rights across the country and globally. And both for those of us here from the College of Education, both are actually qualified teachers. And in addition to their teaching qualifications, have a, a, a whole string of other qualifications. So let me begin with the bio of our first speaker in the program, and that is Ambassador Nuzipo January Bardil. And I'm going to call her Nuzipa, and Nuzipa holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in English, Language and Literature, and a Certificate in Education. She has an MA in Applied Linguistics from Essex, and a Diploma in Human Resource Management. Um, in 2019, she was conferred with an Honorary Doctor of Laws 
um, from the University of Glasgow um, Caledonian in Scotland for her contribution to social and women's justice. Ambassador Nandisa January Bardil is both the chairperson of the Council of the Nelson Mandela University, unfortunately not ours, and the, um, a chairperson of the United Nations Global Compact local network in South Africa. At the start of this year, she was appointed to the Board of Trustees of the UN Voluntary Fund for Technical Assistance and for the implementation of the Universal Periodic Report in the Office of the High Commissioner of, for Human Rights in Geneva. Nuzipa is also the proud owner of Burdil and Associates, a consulting company that advises companies on diversity and inclusion with a focus on race and gender equality, sustainable and responsible business development, stakeholder engagement and government relations. She has served as an independent non-executive director on the boards of several companies over the past 20 years, including as non-executive director of Mercedes-Benz South Africa, the MTN Foundation, Anglo Gold Ashanti, and as chairperson of social ethics and sustainability, the subcommittee of their board. She's also on the board of two NGOs, the one, um, Penduka, um, dealing with child literacy, and Swasaring, running the legal advocacy for victims of gender violence. Um, she's also a trustee of the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital Fund. Um, between 2001 and 2007, Nuzipa served as South Africa's ambassador to Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and to the Holy See, as well as being direct, Deputy Director General responsible for human resources and, foreign service, um, and the Foreign Service Institute in the South African Department of Foreign Affairs. In 2014, she was appointed as Interim Chief of Staff and Special Advisor to the United Nations Women Headquarters in New York, serving also as an expert member of the United Nations Committee on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination. These positions, as well as her 10 years of experience of studying and working abroad in education, local government and public health, particularly in HIV sectors in London, enabled her to gain experience and use her leadership for change management and stakeholder engagement, political and diplomatic knowledge and skills to advocate for justice for all. Um, in her pursuit and her desire to enhance the contribution of African women to, um, to do, um, to the for the development of the continent, Nuzipa chose and recently compiled a book of stories by 55 women leaders across Africa, and the book is called Right to Speak, and it was written during the worst times of the COVID-19 pandemic and has just been launched, and we look forward to seeing that book, Nozipo. Um, colleagues and friends and Vice Chancellor and Mrs. Mbeki, I now wish to introduce our second um, speaker, um, in this um, slot, and I, I, I wish to introduce to you Ms. Nolita Ntumbongwane, um, and she is known by most of us as the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee for Public Works. And so it's my pleasure to introduce Ms. Nolita Ntumbongwane, who has dedicated her life to women's struggles and to the betterment of humankind. Like many of us here present today, Nolita is a teacher by profession, having done a secondary teacher's diploma at Clarkbury College of Education. And I know this rings well with all of us here from the College of Education and most of us um, across the university who, who are teachers as well. She has a string of other qualifications, a BCom in accounting, um, which she obtained at UNITRA, which is now the Walter Sisulu. She has a certificate in local government from the University of Pretoria. And 
She's kept her qualifications with a master's in public administration, which she obtained at the University of Fort Hare. All these qualifications have stood her in very good stead in her very active career, both as a politician and as a women's and human rights activist. She's played many important leadership positions, and she actually talks about her life as being a deployment. And indeed, it has been one immense deployment of immense contributions. Nolita previously served as a member of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature. She was also deployed as a councillor in the Mflontlo local municipality. Between 2011 and 2015, she was a councillor in the Aotambo district and elected as the provincial secretary and provincial coordinator of the ANC Women's League. Um, so stemming from that, her interests in women and women's rights are very high on her agenda, focusing on women from a grassroots point of view. In 2019, she joined the National Assembly as a member of parliament and is currently serving as chairperson of the Portfolio Committee of Public Works and Infrastructure. And here her role crisscrosses with women's rights and women's struggles again, since the work, her work deals with public infrastructure, roads, waterways, sewerage systems, the electricity supply, and all other services that support the quality of life of women and of all. As a woman involved in the political arena, she's been able to, to help make women, um, women focus changes, um, whether it be about tackling gender-based violence or giving women access to certain resources. And so it is my honor to introduce our second speaker and both of our sisters, um, we look forward to your addresses. Over to you, um, Madam um, Chair. Um, um, will um, Ambassador Bodil please take the stage? Bodil. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you very much, Professor McKay, for your very, very kind uh, introduction. I hope you can all hear me. We hear you, hear you. Yes. And good morning to everybody on the on this uh, on this on the on this link uh, for today's session. Um, let me start by also acknowledging the Vice Principal, uh, Professor Puleng Lengambula. Uh, the chair of Saga, uh, Mrs. Mbeki, and Sis Togo and her team from, from Sawid, and also the, the, the leaders of, of, of the University Women's Forum. Uh, it is always a pleasure to being asked to speak, and I must confess, however, distinguished guests, that when Sis Togo asked me to speak today, uh, I, was a little, I was a little perplexed, uh, not because of anything other than that I least expected that. And to be honest, my plate is quite full at the moment, but like I'm sure many of your plates are just as full. But because we are women, we are able to continue to juggle the many responsibilities that we have. Also, you know, I felt that if I said no to this Togo and she's somebody I can't say no to. She's one of those women in my life who, who I always look up to and saying no to her just didn't feel right. Um, this, and, and, and of course, if I, if I didn't say yes, she would have asked somebody else to speak and that would have given her more work to look for, for somebody else. So I feel really honored um, to be here this morning. Um, it is it, it, it created a very fleeting moment for me of remembering Theroza's passing in August 1994 and the shock and disbelief and the enormous loss that was felt by many of us at the time suddenly just came back into my spirit. I was overwhelmed with a deep sense of history uh, at the thought of, of, of Theroza and, and suddenly 
you know, the significance of what is happening at UNISA today in memorializing her and remembering the role she played in our struggle um, sort of came up with a different meaning altogether. And being part of a process to celebrate her memory, as well as that of Charlotte Makweke, Lili Ngoi, and all the women who have already been named, so that we indeed do not erase them from our memory is important. And so thank you, Saweed, and thank you, Yunisa, for today's event. The COVID-19 and the gender-based violence that has happened in the last year uh, has really been a very sad year for many of us. Uh, I called 2020 a year of loss, of deep loss, but also a year of renewal and of hope. And interestingly, uh, experiencing this moment in our lives is a combination of all three at the same time, and they have been differently. Um, the, the weekly attendance of memorial services, the excitement of young women in Saweed reinventing themselves in all kinds of ways, and the messages of hope that we continually get um, are, are, are real for all of us uh, in this room today, I'm sure. Um, it was very disturbing yesterday for me to hear that 23,000 teenage pregnancies with some mums as young as 10 um, was being reported in our newspapers and in our social media. Uh, um, it was also quite infuriating, I must confess. Um, the reports claim that 934 of these young girls are between the ages of 10 and 14, and that they gave birth between April 2020 and March 2021, just in the province of Gauteng. And so, you know, it, it, it just left me wondering, what, why, why, why is it that girls have to be abused in this way? And, and, and why is it that, um, we can't see the, 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 the impact that these pregnancies may have on their lives at such a young age, and just the quality of their life. It seems to be such a waste of, 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 human, uh, of, of human beings who, whose chances of a future are being so compromised by what is happening. But anyway, I, I guess it's one of those things that we will have to continue to work with on our various agendas. Um, in these platforms where we are struggling for gender equality and the end of patriarchy. But then let me not digress because um, the purpose this morning was really to remember for Rosa Adams. Shortly after she passed, um, Jesse Duarte wrote that for Rosa had strong views about women's role being changed. She believed strongly and passionately that women of all persuasions had to have direct involvement in all of society through actively mobilizing and involving them in changing our societies. Others said about Feroza that she had the unique skills to impart to others what she knew, a teacher of note who understood the value of knowledge. She never looked down on anyone and was the most apt person in her youth to lead the National Women's Coalition in what was then the province of the Witwatersrand. Feroza was known as a hard worker who did not mince her words, as well as a wise, empathetic lover of people. She understood that despite our noble constitution, the adoption of which she never lived to, to witness and experience in 1996, that no one gives us human rights because they exist in our hearts before we put them on paper. She understood that we have to win them in struggle. But Rosa, like the women in 1956, took the world and showed us how to live without fear and doubt when you know that is what is right. She was, in Mariam Williamson's words, powerful beyond measure, 
a brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous, fun-loving child of God. She died like other icon leaders in whose memory we have gathered today, having not paused or wavered in her selflessness. As I struggle to remember Feroz's ferocity and intolerance of injustice, I was reminded of another one of our young fearless heroines, maybe because she also passed in around this time in July 2017. And in this regard, I talk of the late Prudence Mabeles, mm. whose memorial service on Sunday, the 16th of July in 20, uh, 2017, and her funeral on the 19th was very painful for many of us who knew and understood how HIV infection impacted on her young life, as well as the choice she made to defy those who chose to rob her of her humanity, her right to life and love, and her identity and her dignity. I had met Prudence and Feroza at about the same time in 1994 on my return from living abroad for 10 years and settling down in Cape Town as director of World University Service. Our dear uh, uh, doc, uh, Dr. Pumzilem Lambonuga had come to recruit me to take over from her as she was heading to Parliament at the same time as Feroza. Prudence was the first South African-based woman I'd met who was also diagnosed with a disease whose stigma could, could have killed anyone who didn't have the whirl of steel that she'd, that she'd had. She embraced her HIV status and demonstrated through a feisty and fierce struggle the indomitable spirit of the human race. And she knew how to fight back when there is a need. She also believed that despite our constitution, no one gives us human rights because they exist in our hearts before we put them on paper. We have to win them in struggle. Prudence also took on the world and showed us how to live without fear and doubt when you know what is right. She was also powerful beyond measure, a brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous child of God. She died having not paused or wavered in her selflessness. She was a tireless leader to women through her positive women's network and to many others who need positive and heroic role models in the broken country we now live in. The affectionate prudence was strong at the broken places. Her scars reinforced that inner strength that was part of her makeup. She left us all a legacy at a time when we have to fight for the soul of this nation and country that we love so intensely. This memory that I am recalling happened between the funeral on the 18th of July, 2017, when the people of South Africa and the world stopped to pay tribute to another fierce fighter for peace, justice, dignity, and human rights, our very own Tata Madiba. Many of us in 2017, July, chose to use the 67 minutes and the day to go to the Rima Church in Randburg to attend the Conference for the Future of South Africa, organized by a range of civil society bodies to galvanize our efforts in reclaiming and rebuilding our fractured and morally decaying society. On the day after the conference, Prudence's body lay in the same church in her red coffin. And this massive place of worship had presented funeral congregates and conference delegates a safe space to mourn the loss of their beloved sister and fighter and the capture of the state in our beloved country. So for me, the two juxtaposed moments also re-energized our inherent desire to be freed from the shackles of fear, despair, and silence. The fighting spirits of Madiba, of Prudence, of Rosa Adams, inspired both mourners and conference delegates to realize the power in all of us to hope for and create a better future for our country. Both occasions attracted a diverse range of South Africans who understand that the future is in our hands. And like Feroza, Prudence and Charlotte Makweke, Madiba and many others, that there is an urgent need to re-engage a moral struggle to restore our dignity and dignity from the wretchedness of those compatriots and their friends who have chosen to betray the people of this nation. 
Indeed, they were teachers who didn't leave anyone behind and led in crisis as professionals, as freedom fighters who loved their people and were willing to raise their voices in protest and face whatever the consequences. After much reflection on Prudence's passing and Tata Madiba's birthday in those times, and in joining the dots on the sequence of events during that week, I was reminded of the saying that there's no such thing as coincidence. The congruence of death, life, loss, renewal, reinvention, and hope all melded seamlessly in four memorable days in the lives of many of us in South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen on this uh, platform today, COVID-19 has again showed us the face of death, of loss, of life, renewal, reinvention, and hope. The anchor that the histories of those before us have provided need not be underestimated. The lesson for me is that we cannot afford to forget. We have to resuscitate our voices and our histories if we want to implement generation equality. And when the, National, uh, when the Nelson Mandela University launched the Center for Women and Gender Studies, at the end of last year, its mandate is to do exactly that. Our first interim director, Dr. Babalwa Magwakwana, aptly explained that it is the intellectual cleansing of her story aimed at healing the systematic and intellectual trauma that defines our society today. We have to tell and retell our own stories, all of us, Black women, rural women, women of LGBTQI identities, intellectuals and women in business and in the church, as well as other platforms. Leaving no one behind does indeed mean that we have to, like Feroza, not look down on anyone or suppose that people who are not like us are lesser or should be kicked to the curb. It does not work and it will not, as we witnessed in the recent events of our country in KZN. We will all shape our future, but we must understand our past and face, face it, as James Baldwin always reminds us. We will not achieve generation equality with a consciousness that is limited to our personal experience only. The work of the Forum and SOWEED and the education that is embedded in all the activities of these institutions is the only formula for leaving no one behind and the spirit of each one teach one. Just to conclude, I would like to make reference to one of the stories in the book that I compiled this year called Right to Speak. The story is written by a Nigerian woman who is as active as we all are in engaging on gender struggles. This time, uh, Aisha Asori, this is her name, decided that she wanted to stand for office in one of her political parties. And of course, I won't read the whole story, but the main thrust of what she writes about is how she tries to become involved in her political party so that she can be a candidate for her election. And uh, she struggles to get in because of all kinds of processes that make it difficult for women to get into her party. She has to raise quite a lot of money and she's not able to do that. She borrows money from family and friends and some of them work with her, but others are very reluctant to see a woman stand for political office. So in concluding her story, she writes this and I will just read it briefly. We hear that it is important to have a seat at the table because otherwise you are on the menu. But what if you have a seat and it's an avatar table, and you are cannibalizing yourself. Audre Lord said the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. If women want more representation in government and leadership, ostensibly to improve their lives and the lives of the public in general, then we are going to have to define what leadership means to us in a way that appeals to our stakeholders imprisoned in patriarchy. Our advocacy cannot be that we deserve a place at the slaughter. At the same time, we are not advocating for more female war criminals or drug barons. We need a new table, and there lies the fundamental flaw in how women want to organize for power 
in a patriarchal world. We want to join the men in a destructive system that men created and are expert of, that when, sorry, we want to join the men in a destructive system that men created and are expert at when what is required is the vision and forbearance to build a new inclusive values-driven political system that fully understands and appreciates the needs, not only of women, but society as a whole. Our political structures will not change themselves by themselves. We will have to force reform. This entails women championing three things. The first is constitutional reform to create the framework for the inclusive, socially responsible and values driven society we want. Most of our constitutions are designed for exploitation and continuing the extractive policies of the colonialists and those who replace them. The second is electoral reform, accepting that everything from the composition and funding of the election management body to the role of state security in our elections and the order in which elections occur is designed to rig elections with elected representatives and their partners in the civil service unaccountable to the people whose votes they know do not count. The third is political mobilization. This will take multiple forms for those who will build the movements within the citizenry who must be active and understand their role in a successful nonviolent protest capable of reforms. We will need those who will join or start political parties that are radically different from the existing platforms for contesting elections, including open membership based on ideology and values, fundraising independent of government contracts and public funds and strong party discipline. We have to play the game like the men in our biggest undoing, is our biggest undoing, she says. It makes it impossible to see that this does not have to be only one game and that the current one is killing us. Today in 2020, the world is on its knees, not solely due to COVID-19 pandemic, but also from the games we have played for decades with oppression, tyranny, exclusion, greed, intolerance for diversity and disregard for the environment. This is what has weakened our ability to handle the pandemic despite all the technological gains the world has made since the last worldwide pandemic in 1918. And so I'll stop there. Um, she, but, but wait, she says we have little to no social security for the most vulnerable in our society. And while we are armed to the hilt with weapons of mass destruction, we have not invested in quality education and health. If this is the game that women want to play, especially in the development, developing global south, then it will be a long time before we see the meaningful reforms we need. And so generation equality really invites us to shift our focus from what, is, what has been very normal. To achieve that, we have to remember Beijing and the women who made it to the top, who have not moved the people even 25% further than they were in terms of standards of living and quality of life. Let's pledge to spend the next 25 years doing things differently to build viable political programs that can win elections by providing practical viable alternatives to what currently exists. What do we have to lose? So yes, uh, the, the, the challenges are, 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 are very obvious but they are also very difficult. And the encouragement I think that I find in doing, working with, with Saweed, the, the, the women who have literally uh, on a daily basis devoted their lives to making a difference is one that I think I use as, a, as an anchor. Um, and I invite all of us to use the anchor that involvement and participation gives to us to make a difference in our country. It is not yet Uhuru, indeed. We have a long way to go. COVID-19 has amplified our struggles, but there is always a silver lining and some light at the end of the tunnel. Generation equality has also inspired us to seek a better future, and I believe that we will. 
So in conclusion, I want to thank you again, Yunisa and Saweet for inviting us all to today's memorial, uh, not memorial service, um, to today's meeting to remember the women in our past, the women in our present who have made a difference and changed our lives in front of our eyes. There's lots more to come, but I think we must not underestimate the challenges that we face. I wish you a pleasant day and also those women who have been awarded. We thank the university and Saweed for recognizing them and in turn wish them a prosperous future ahead. Um, and certainly uh, the rest of 2021, hope that COVID will stop decimating the many people in our country and the world, uh, including those in, in Afghanistan that we have uh, I've seen at the moment um, and other women across the world who, for whom gender equality is, is a thing that they can't even dream about um, in the way that we can. Thank you very much. May Nolita Dombongwana, it's your opportunity now. Are you ready, ma? Thank you. Yes, I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready. Uh, program directors, Ms. Tembega Ndulim Papama and Ms. Kedibone Ntasha, our the Unis the UNISA principal and vice chancellor, Prof. Puleng Lenkabua, our former first lady. Me Zanele Mbegi, Mam Togombumlana, Chairperson of Sawit, Madam Flora Maboa Boltman, Chairperson of Salga Women's Commission, the UNISA Women's Forum Leadership, Honorable Guests and Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen, greetings to you all. Thank you, Prof. McKay, for such an introduction. Program directors, I'm so humbled and honored today to be one of the speakers to commemorate the life of Comrade Feroza Adams. Comrade Feroza remains a heroine of our struggle who epitomized the famous words of Mount Charlotte McGregor, which states that, um, I quote, this work is not for yourselves, kill that spirit of self and do not live above your people, but live with them if you can rise bring someone with you, uh, close quote. Throughout her young life, which was tragically cut short by a car accident, Comrade Feroza never cowered and try as hell, never beat her tongue. She spoke truth to power. And because she understood the importance of emancipating the country, she joined the struggle for freedom at a very young age and served our people whether being in the UDF, Federation of Transgender Women, and the ANC Women's League, and the broader mass democratic movement. Had Comrade Feroza still been alive, I have no doubt she would have been at the forefront of the transformation agenda of women um, and emancipation. We owe it to her to ensure that the future generation of women do not experience the same challenges that we are experiencing today. As, as Mama who, who just spoke now, that it is not yet Uhuru. Comrade Feroza and her generation won their fight of bringing the unjust and racist apartheid regime to its knees. Now we have no choice but to win ours, which is to ensure women get their seats at the table. Comrade Feroza and her generation of brave women played their part in getting us political freedom. But we still have a long way to ensure that we even the playing field because right now women are not yet economically free. The theme for this Feroza Adam Memorial Lecture 
uh, and UNISA Women of the Year Award Ceremony, Generation Equality, Realizing Women's Rights for an Equal Future, and sub themes No Women Left Behind as We Strive for Total Liberation, is perfect for what we as women are experiencing at the moment. It is a well-known fact that there is still a big pay disparity between women and men. A man doing the same job as a woman is more likely going to be paid more. This is an entrenched societal problem which has been found around for generations. This contributes to the chauvinist behavior we see at times. Uh, I'm being generous here, uh, but most of the time. Women are not being paid less than their male counterparts because they cannot do the job. They are paid less because of years of oppression and being told our place is in the kitchen. In fact, anything men can do, women can do twice better. It is the time to level the playing field now. Women emancipation can no longer be postponed. We need the society to be transformed so that women will no longer be treated like second class citizens. This transformation has to happen, not only in government, but in institutions of higher learning and the private sector. I am glad that universities like UNISA, USU, NMU, and UCT are working the transformation agenda and have trusted capable leaders as their vice chancellor who are women. And we all know that this has just been recent in the uh, just few years back. It has never been there before. We applaud those institutions that have done so. But this transformation must trickle down to the other senior positions like deans and HOD. For example, here in UNISA, how many deans are women and in other institutions of higher learning? The fact that there are women than men in South Africa, state South Africa has indicated that in several census that it has done, that in terms of the population, women are more than men in South Africa. But when you look at the number of CEOs in South Africa, only 5% are women in a population that has more women than men. And this is really a shame. This is not because there are no qualified women for the positions, but women are mostly overlooked when it comes to promotions. It is all over in government, in private sector. We all know women are superheroes without capes, perhaps Author Eric S. Gray best described women when he famously said, I quote, whatever you give a woman, she is going to multiply. If you give her a sperm, she will give you a baby. If you give her a house, she will give you a home. If you give her groceries, she will give you a meal. If you give her love, she will give you her heart. She multiplies and enlarges what is given to her, close quote. The point is for, for all the challenges South African has, women could be the solution, but no one will give us what is rightful ours. We need to take it. Uh, as one of um, our young uh, girls who became Miss Universe in, in 20, 19, Zosbini Tunes said that uh, we need to take our space as women. Because of their egos, men will not admit that they have failed. And we are, as women, are more likely to succeed. But the time for nursing their egos is over now. The time for us women nursing men's egos is over now. That is why we should not only just talk about a woman as a CEO, a woman as a business owner, women as professors, 
women as vice chancellors, women as director generals, women as councillors, mayors, MECs, premiers, ministers, deputy ministers, and even president of, of the country. We must talk about that as women. But for us to advance this, we need to be united and ensure that this is realized. We need to be united as women. We need to support each other, not only in theory, but in practice. In many cases, when a woman has to be taken down, women are used to fight each other, to take that woman down. Other than ensuring that we support each other, we ensure that women go up the ladder, being supported by the majority of the population of South Africa, we are used as women to fight and bring other women down. Uh, Comrade Ferroz, uh, when giving a speech in the conference of the Ainsman's League in 1990, she emphasized the importance of having unity amongst women. She said, I quote, it is important for us to unite women committed to a non-racial, non-sexist democratic South Africa. Otherwise, we will find ourselves in the same situation as women from other countries in the post-liberation era. After having struggled together with their men for liberation, women comrades found their position had not changed. They are still second citizens. Women need to accept, we need to assert our position as women more strongly now than ever before. We can only do that as one unified, loud voice, close quotes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are grateful that Comrade Feroza and other gallant revolutionary fighters paved the way for us, but it is up to us now, this generation, to pick up the baton and ensure that total women emancipation is realized. Uh, one of the young men who lived, uh, I believe so, before his time, President Thomas Sankara, the president of Burkina Faso, in his political orientation speech uh, on the 2nd of October, 1983, on the role of women, he said, I quote, the genuine emancipation of women is one that entrusts responsibilities to men that compels men to give their respect and consideration. Emancipation, like freedom, is not, uh, it, it, it is not free, it has to be conquered. It is for women themselves to put forward their demands and mobilize to win them, close quote. I'm saying that he lived before his time because at that young age, he could see that we women, we need to stand up. We need to fight for our rights. We need to demand that we are given our rights as women, not as, not as issues of charity, but because we deserve to be there as women. We should not accept crumbs anymore, but demand a piece of the cake, not as a favor, but because we deserve it as women. As a reminder to all women who are in the top echelons of the public or private sector, just like Comrade Feroza, let us optimize the words of Mam Charlotte McCracken as we celebrate uh, his 150 years, should, they, should he have been alive. Um, open quotes, this work is not for yourself. Kill the spirit of self and do not live above your people but live with them. If you can rise, bring someone with you, close quote. And when I close, I want to congratulate everyone that will receive an award here today. This is a great recognition for the work that you do. Keep it up, please. Happy Women's Month to all the women in the platform. Malibongwe. Thank you. Welcome, Derek. Malibongwe, Malibongwe, Kamalama Kosikazi. Wow, thank you, Menolita.
Uh, but I'll start right at the beginning where I would thank uh, Professor Veronica McKay for always availing herself to support UWF and UNISA women. She, as she was introducing the two powerful keynote speakers, I was in fact reminded of what she said earlier this year, where she affirmed us as women that there's nothing wrong with us as women. We need no fixing. She went on to say, in fact, it is systems that must be fixed. We further appreciate our keynote speakers, Ambassador Dr. Nozipo Januari Badel and Ms. Noli Tombongwane for gracing us with such thoughtful thought-provoking presentation that actually reminded us of the struggles that we still face as women. Indeed, we must not allow to be used as women. We must continue to unite. Ladies and gents, if you want to see unity, join UNISA Women's Forum. You will feel unity. You will feel the support and protection. Before I introduce our chairperson, oh, Professor Mahano, would like to pause for comments and questions, uh, which will be handled by Ukidiboni. Over to you, Ukidiboni. Thank you, uh, Tembega. And thank you, uh, participants and the guests. There are two questions that I have noted. The others are comments, and we appreciate the comments uh, that are coming through. Keep, on, keep them coming. The first question um, from Professor Lula Mama Kubela, it is to Meflora Mabua. I hope she's still in the, in the session. Uh, it reads as follows. Is it the representation we are striving for, or is it changing the system from within that renders women inefficient in the leadership responsibilities they hold in various institutions as if they are lesser children of God than capable to lead like men. Me Flora, are you here to respond? Okay, it seems like Me Flora is not here to respond. We will pass on the question to her and respond later. The second question is to Me Togo, and it reads as follows. What is, the, what is it that women's movement such as Sawit can do concretely to ensure that women you nominate to take up leadership positions are supported to lead? Me Togo. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, I don't think it is Saweed, but all of us, the generation equality and um, in all institutions. I think uh, what uh, Professor Malule, uh, uh, Lulu Makubela is saying is that it's cold at the top. And so we actually, I'm quite excited by some of the programs that are there that are meant for women, but women themselves must not think they've arrived. The system is too toxic, as I said earlier. Patriarchy is too toxic. You must always surround yourself with people who will even be there for you when you are most vulnerable. Um, the, the, the patriarchy wants to tell us that when you are a leader, you don't have problems. You, you, you've got all the answers, you've got You've got all the strength, you've got all the resources, you are it. A, a good example, just in Afghanistan, everyone is laughing at the, 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 the previous government person who packed his bag and went and, and left. The truth is, it's, it's okay if you can't handle a situation to say, it's too difficult, I can't handle it, please help me and not to pretend. So we, it's a two-way process. There are forums like SAWIT, there are organizations in business, in, 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 but people must be prepared to surround and to open themselves to a new way of leadership, not pyramid, but flat. Holding hands with civil society organizations on the ground. Who, don't, who have the intelligence of what is going on. There's nothing as embarrassing as a leader who says, 
the opposite of what is real on the ground. So we appeal to women leaders to be prepared to work with everybody, civil society organization, prepared to learn and to be to be prepared to be vulnerable as well and and have safe spaces. Sawid does offer that opportunity for safe spaces. What we do, we look for an organization that can support you in an area where you need to be connected as a leader. So that's what we do. But also we do take some causes. If really things are bad, uh, we bring a, a, a group together to say, how do we support that leader who is really in trouble now? Because we believe uh, women leaders who've got the right uh, have to be assisted to not be toxic themselves, but to be the type of leader that brings development and bring a new way of leadership uh, uh, in, in the space to be supported uh, through continuous learning, uh, which I think UNISA is good at, at continuous learning and upscaling uh, themselves and surrounding themselves uh, appropriately. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Meto. you so much, Miss. Thank you so much, uh, Metogo, as well as Kiriboni, for that engagement. Colleagues, I see a lot of uh, exciting comments that are already on the chat, and would like to also appreciate the colleagues that are tweeting. Thank you so much. We appreciate this engagement. We're also excited to see that UNISA Radio is also supporting this event. Thank you so much. Now, the lady that I'm about to introduce is our chairperson, Professor Mahano. This lady doesn't get discouraged easily. Yesterday, when we were told that uh, we cannot play any music uh, in order to respect the rights of artists, she simply obliged. She didn't ask any questions. She said, forward, we continue. Now, that is a spirit that we need to have as UNISA women. Professor Mahano, over to you to present the awards. Thank you. Program directors, Me Tembeka Mpapama, Me Kidiboni Tansa, the principal and vice chancellor, Professor Puleng Lenkabula, the vice principals present here, Prof. McKay, Prof. Meyiwa, Me Zanele Mbeki, our former first lady, Me Togompumlwana, and all Sawid mothers present here, the Salga representative present here, our keynote address given by Me Nolita Ntombengwana and Dr. Nozipo January Badil, and all the guests present here, the participants of our program, UNISA Women's Forum, Mothers. I see the gentlemen have joined us. Also the Ambassador Jasbei Iqbal of Eritrea. All women who are today commemorating with us the Feroza Ada Memorial Lecture. And all the other legends like uh, Oh Mama, Winnie Mandela, Me Albertina Sisulu, Me Lilian Ngoi, Me Charlotte Makleke, just to name a few. As women in the 21st century, we really honor the work that was done by our predecessors. And we are really ha happy as UNISA that after so many years, UNISA could realize that they need a woman as a leader in the forefront. I just want to appreciate the poets. I just want to say we are no bodies, but we are some bodies because we have a voice. And as you are given a voice as a woman, how do you use it? Are you using it in a positive way or in a negative way? Thank you to the words that were echoed this morning by our poets. Without any waste of time, as UNISA Women's Forum, we just want to celebrate excellence. The woman of valor, the woman of integrity,
the woman who showcased who they are in the space of UNISA. We have six categories that we normally put forward for women to nominate themselves or women to be nominated by others. I want to quote the words of a famous and prolific author, Tanya Jovanovsky, who said, no one can climb the ladder of success with their hands in their pockets. Now, these women that we are going to celebrate today, they demonstrated excellence. They demonstrated that they can perform and outpace themselves in whatever that they are doing. I'm going to share the screen. I hope the screen is visible. Program director, can you? Um, yes, it is. It is it visible. Is, it is visible. Okay. Thank you very much. We have the six categories here that outline the women of excellence, the women who outpaced others. In the six categories, we have transformative leadership, significant achievement, community service, Courage in Adversity, Feroza Adam Award for Gender Activism. The first category, as I'm going to look at it here, it is the category of transformative leadership. In this category, a woman who showed excellence is none other than Professor Jojo Zingizwa Monika. This woman has a number of accolades. She's involved in community engagement in the area of Bizana, that is Eastern Cape. She's teaching Mets FET educators. She's also involved in the after school project, which is also participate, I mean, where she's working with the Mets teachers in that area. I love the work that Prof. Jojo did. And I just want to say to Professor Jojo, well done a certificate of excellence will be presented to her in that order that she has demonstrated a transformative leadership in the field of mathematics. And in this field, we know that it is not easy, but we just want to applause Professor Jojo. I did not see the virtual hands. I did not see the love um, virtual signs. Can we just applaud Prof. Jojo, for now. Colleagues, I'm struggling to get my screen back. Um, the hands are up, Prof. Okay. But your screen is not moving. Hey, is it hey, moving now? There we go, okay. yes. Thank you very much. This is Professor Jojo. Is he uh, the, the, the METS project in Bizana? The founder of South African Women in Mathematical Sciences, SWAMSA, and this um, organization was launched at UNISA. She focused on grade eight geometry in Mount Elif district, 2016 to 2018. And currently she's also a member of uh, the committee calls, called CAMW, it's for mathematics. Who nominated this woman? It's none other than Ms. Puleng Mutseki in the maths department in the College of Education. Shall we applaud her again because the screen was not showing. Thank you very much. Lili, 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 Lili. Thank you very much. The certificate of uh, transformative leadership is awarded to Professor Monica Jojo. Thank you very much. In the second category, 
where we have significant achievements. The nominee is none other than Ms. Shamila Ramjawan from the College of Economic and Management Sciences. This woman has shown a tremendous achievements and accolades nationally and internationally. Her revolutionary menstrual cup is now sold in various countries in Africa. She has also renowned achievements in the community and also leading in the business sector. She was nominated by who? by Shamila Ramjawan. Virtual applause, virtual love signs, virtual and also can we just, oh, two minutes or two seconds, just you relate for this woman who did a lot. Of significant achievements to Ms. Shamila Ramjawan in 2021. In the third category of community service, we have Me Morafe Tabani from SBL. Me Morafe Tabani was nominated by Professor Mapula Nwepe from College of Education. Teachers are generous. They nominate everybody. Teachers are very kind. This woman, a phenomenal woman, Memorafi Tabani. You can hear the name, Morafi. Therefore, she got an award in community service because her name is Morafi, a nation builder. She's involved in the rural empowerment, woman empowerment program. She exposes entrepreneurs to a bigger market to take advantage of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. She's also involved in the Rural Urban Linkages Project, which is led by Professor Mswelim, and uh, she's an advocate for racial equality. She was participating in the Pretoria Girls High School some years back when there were racial tensions. Memora Fetabani was there as a mother, as a parent to say no to our black children, black lives matter. May we applause and you to this Morafi Metabani. The Thank you. The certificate of uh, excellence in community service is awarded to Me Morafi Tabani. In the fourth category, the customer service Batopeli category. As UNISA Women's Forum, we believe in no woman left behind. We looked at the work that is done by our cleaners in our various regions and buildings, and we came across these names. They were uh, nominated by their leaders in respective buildings where they clean our toilets, they clean our bathrooms, our corridors, our offices, and the following names came forth. Ms. Rodo Mbendani, Ms. Regina Kanyani Tibeila, Ms. Tabi Mathandala, Ms. Susan Nisi, Ms. Jessina Marke. Can we just give them a eulation as we celebrate <laughs> the <laughs> party? <laughs> <laughs> we make sure that our buildings are clean and we are okay <laughs> in a clean <laughs> environment. Their certificate will be as follows. Ms. Rodon Bendani in customer service, Batupele. Ms. Regina Kanyani Tibela, customer service, Batupele. Ms. Tabi Mathandala, Customer service, Batopele. Me Susan Mnisi, customer service, Batopele. And Miss Jessina Maike. We are very happy. No woman left behind in excellence at UNISA. In the fifth category, courage in adversity, the nominee is none other than Miss Laposia Masangu Machila who nominated this courageous woman? It's none other than Me Matabe Kholani from CGS. What did this phenomenal woman do and contribute? She serves UNISA with passion and diligence. 
She experienced a life-threatening illness, was diagnosed with necrotizing polymyositis in February 2019. Despite the disability that she incurred in 2019, she continued to work hard. She obtained her master's qualification with UNISA in 2020. And she also passed an online Oxford Women's Leadership Development Program. And currently, she is registered for a PhD. She's confined to a wheelchair, but we are really appreciating the courage that this woman is forging ahead and saying, devil, you are a liar. I'm going to achieve, I'm somebody. I'm somebody. Let's applaud Me Laposhia Machila, who will be awarded a certificate in courage in adversity and Yuli late for this. Thank you. Thank you, Me Machila, for your hard work and resilience that you have shown. In the sixth category is the Feroza Adam Award for Gender Activism. This award is given to a woman who showed resilience, who empowered communities, who showed against all odds that it is possible to empower nations, women, men, young people, boys and girls, it's none other than Dr. James Genevieve, who nominated this mother. It's Professor Piera Bicard, where College of Education. What did Mayor Dr. James Genevieve did? She transformed communities. She made it a point that communities are sustainable. And she created avenues for employment. She provided workshops for healing, uh, therapy sessions, and ensured that women are able to rise. Currently, we are using her um, leadership and her resources chance to advance to make sure that UWF is continuing with the empowerment of women. And uh, she's a human rights activist. She builds hope in communities. The certificate is of um, advocacy and promotion of women's rights. The Feroza Adam Memorial Award is going to Me James Genevieve. Shall we hear an applause and ululation uh, as we in closing, I just want to quote the words that were echoed today from me, uh, at the, the first speaker who presented this morning, Me Mabua and Me Nolita, and all the other speakers met. Hello, Prof. Uh, please come in, Kidiboni. Prof is having a challenge. Thank you, colleagues. OK. Thank you, uh, Prof Maranu, for uh, giving us the winners of UNISA Women of the Year 2021. Um, from all I heard the, of the winners is that each time a woman stands up for herself, she stands for she stand up for all the women. So we congratulate them. And I will now introduce you to the mother of the institution, the first woman to lead this grand institution, a scholar, principal, and vice chancellor, Prof. Puleng Lengabula. Prof, here are your children. Please come and congratulate the recipients of this. Uh, prestigious awards. Over to you, Prof. Prof. <laughs> 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 
Ria, 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 ria. Ria, 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 ria. Come on, Frog. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Uh, especially Professor McKay, Vice Principal Teaching and Learning and Engaged Scholarship. Professor Meiwa, Vice Principal Research, Innovation and Commercialization. Your Excellency Ambassador Nosipo, January Badil, Chairperson of Nelson Mandela University. You are welcome. I remember the many moments that you've made av yourself available for UNISA when you were at MTN, when you were at DECO, you've always been a partner to the University of South Africa, and we appreciate your leadership. Ms. Nolita Dombongwana, Chairperson of Portfolio Committee on Public Works, Eastern Cape. Ms. Martha Muller from Saweed. Ms. Kate Mafate Mapula Tobejani. Ms. Claudia Fratini, representatives of South African Women Dialogue, Sawid, Me Zanele Mbeki, the founder of Sawid, Me Tokom Pumlwan, the chairperson of Sawid, Me Flora Mabua Boltman, chairperson of Salga Women's Commission, Me Meahabo Mahanu, chairperson of Women's Forum, and all members of UNISA Women's Forum in attendance, but also in absentia. And I extend my warm gratitude that you're such great leaders in ensuring that UNISA is able to commemorate and celebrate women's agency, talent, initiative, and contribution, not only to the academic agenda, but also societal transformations and development. I also would like to recognize our nominees and nominators present here today, Professor Mahano spoke with such passion, reminding them that uh, when they represent excellence, success, initiative, resilience, and commitment to changing the world, they represent the aspirations and the initiatives that most women have to expand in their work, in their homes, but also even outside work. So, Professor Singiswa Monika Jojo, Ms. Shamila Ramjuan, Ms. Morafe Dabani, Ms. Martha Tabindala, Ms. Zan Nisi, Ms. Rodom Bendan, Ms. Jezina Maake, Ms. Regina Khanyani, Tibela, La Portia Matlangu Majila, Dr. Genevieve James. And then uh, I'd also like to recognize uh, all friends, colleagues, uh, uh, and uh, women, uh, trans women, non-conforming individuals whose gender align with uh, our being as women. Friends, it is a real pressure for me, pleasure for me to join in celebrating INISA Most Outstanding Women Achiever. As a university community that is committed to the creation of a center for inclusive excellence, it is important that we ramp up practices that showcase women who lead from the front, the back, top, underneath, in all environments, such that we don't only have a vertical, but must have some longitudinal leadership approaches. That the UNISA Woman of the Year Award happens within the context of the Rosa Adam Memorial Lecture is a reminder of the generation that agitated so valiantly for the freedom we enjoy today. It is not by accident that this award takes place during the month of August, when we take the time as a country to recognize, commemorate, celebrate, lift up all the women in our lives who have led and agitated for the freedom and dignity of citizens of South Africa, the continent, and the global arena. 
understanding the challenges of colonialism, apartheid, which stripped us our humanity. Theresa Adam was deeply committed to the idea of a non-sexist South Africa. And in her short life, she urged women to agitate for sustain sustainable inclusivity. Adam is an epitome of black excellence. She was unstoppable since she was ready politically, she was already politically savvy from her time at Nirvana High School. She spoke on behalf of many South African women who had been multiply oppressed and with and those with muted voices. In her earthly life, Theresa Adam left an indelible mark because, as already noted by our keynote, but also the other speakers, she was committed to the notion of an anti-racist, anti-sexist, democratic South Africa. In a speech given four years before her death at age 33, which is a very young age, she said, it is important for us to, to unite women committed to an anti racist, anti-sexist, democratic South Africa. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves in the same situation as women from other countries in the post-liberation era. After having struggled together with the men for liberation, women comrades found their position had not changed. We need to assert our position as women more strongly now than ever before, and we can only do that as a unified, loud, voice at ed agency it is so fitting that the lecture that commemorates Theresa adam is presented in the year of another powerful woman that is me charlotte mcleke while many were still debating if a girl child should be given an opportunity to go to school me charlotte completed her degree in bsc in 1903 and made history, mark this, not history, history by being recognized as the first African woman, woman to obtain a degree in the United States of America. While people were still wondering if women could be good, captivated by the flawed mentality that sa itswa ye tadipili diwe la galiopeng a Sbedi expression that she was one of the leaders of the night that that one of the leaders of the 1956 women's march to the union building to fight against the carrying of the passes imposed on black people asserted she continues to be remembered as one of south africa's most important leaders to date the last 27 years of free democratic south africa have reminded us that the freedom is always a site of contest and that we cannot take for granted the freedoms guaranteed in the constitution for granted. The last few years have sharpened the focus on inclusivity. And my sense is that women are moving away from the idea that women must be like men or compared to men or even be or mimic what is considered the standard by men for success, excellence, and liberation. The 21st century woman is focused on inclusivity and equality for all, and is unlikely to be co-opted onto platforms that are inherently unequal, non-emancipatory, and unattentive or inattentive to the social, economic, political, and ecological conditions within which she lives out her life. It is also a reminder, for instance, of how hard women and their efforts to transform society 27 years later into, their, into the freedom of our society is still precarious. But today's women are not asking for permission to set aside the practices of the past that led to their marginalization. We are the generation that assume equality, that insists on inclusion, and that ensures that we collaboratively work with others in order that we transform our society, the institutions within our society, and in universities using 
education as a lever for such transformations. Across the African diaspora, we have seen how sisters and allies have dared us to reimagine the kind of society that we are building. Bell hooks in Sisters of Yam, Black women and self recovery, cautions us against underestimating the structural obstacles that undermine the agency and initiatives or talents of women. She says, no level of individual self-actualization alone can sustain the marginalized and oppressed. We must be linked to the collective struggle, to communities of resistance that move us outward into the world. And with these words, I'm truly, truly grateful to the UNISA Women's Forum, not only for your partnership with SAWID or the UN, but also for your commitment to ensuring that the elitist stratification of women that sometimes limit us from finding solidarity with each other are overcome. For the role of education enables us to straddle the different dynamics of race, class, gender, and other modalities that are used to discriminate, marginalize, or prejudice. As a university, we have to contribute to the reimagination, uh, reimagination work necessary to develop the theories and practices that create sustainable social order. We also have to take every opportunity to celebrate and remember the voices of women who helped to bring us our freedom, many of whom Sawit has brought forth many of whom Professor Mahan, we have celebrated by name in the protocols, but who are here with us that we celebrate through thoughts, prayers, support, and really wanting to ensure that their histories are always remembered and we hold on to them as our forebears. I'm also thinking that as we take this every opportunity to celebrate and remember the voices of women who help bring us our freedom. We must ensure that they're not easily forgotten or violently erased. We have seen the erasure of women. We have heard new words coming out, uh, such as he pitted. When a woman makes a, an important invention and a man repeats it, and then we accord it to a man. These are just some examples of erasure. We've seen that there's no shortage of those who will minimize the pivotal roles played by individuals or women, such as Winnie Madikizela Mandela. In recalling her mother's wisdom, Ruth Bader Ginsburg shared this memory. She says, my mother told me to be a lady. For her, that meant to be your own person to be independent, to trust in your voice and to participate as you are, not as what people frame you to be. The young generation today that we have also honored insist on their freedom. They are not prepared to negotiate for what is guaranteed only in the constitution. The words of the writer Malebo Sepudu have come to mind. She says, we should at all times insist that we belong to ourselves and have the agency to make decisions about our own lives. Our voices, whether loud or soft, matter. Our behavior, whether seen as good or bad, remains our choice. And this is in the misbehave. Over the Martha, your mic is on. Your mic is on. Yes, and giving the echo, sorry. Over the past decade, I've reflected deeply on what it means for Africa's women's experience exclusion, given that the very organizing philosophy of our people is Ubuntu. You'd have 
you'd have thought Ubuntu offers Africa an extraordinary advantage because it already anticipates diversity. It recognizes our beings. It even recognizes us beyond gender binaries. Sometimes I feel that as a country, we had a moment of hope and then we somehow let it slip from our hands. It is important to remember that as recently as just over a decade ago, we had a woman-led reserve bank. We had a deputy president a woman. We also uh, 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 had uh, women leading minerals and energy department, and we had women leading the Independent Electoral Commission, uh, MEBAM. You have to say this was South Africa's way of saying people are our most precious resource and we will tap into the diversity of our people and leverage their talents. What happened to this positive trajectory, idealism, aspiration of an inclusive society that values the talents of women and their contribution? While we can be sure that the revolution will not be tweeted, the young generation remind us every day that social media has become the theater of many a struggle. I remember as the Dean of Students, following the first iterations of Fees Must Fall movement, it was chilling to see how momentum of that movement was built on the digital platforms. I've also recognized in recent times where the Me Too movement or the calls for gender-based violence, eradication, and others also being agitated in the cold front via contact, but also these digital platforms. The power of the message is always amplified on the internet and the digital platforms but it is even louder with when it's expressed in action. Those of us who advocate for equality, inclusivity, and diversity, while driving institutions that deliver high performance, must know that the internet sometimes, not all the time, democratize access to the most important conversations of the day. As a center of academic excellence, UNISA and staff, friends, colleagues, allies, alumni of UNISA, as well as students, the most primary stakeholder. We must stand up and be counted. We must tap into the power of online platforms to drive the conversations that take us closer to our goal of society founded on equality and inclusivity. And additionally, we must invest in historicizing through books, articles, poems, sculptures, art, the expressions, lives, and contributions of women. Perosa Adam was only 23 years when she served as a publicist for Federation of South African Women. Together with the women activists of her time, they showed us that their rage and anger around injustice, their passion for freedom, and their impatience with the shackles of patriarchy and karaoke would truly begin to turn the wheels of change. She and the leaders of her time knew what we still know now, that without equality, there's no meaningful progress, that there's no power, uh, that there's no power in unity. That unity of purpose is seeing the importance of a world of emancipated women and their societies. Unity of action in agitating together for the realization of the aspirations of a non-racial, non-sexist, democratic South Africa. As we gather today to celebrate the extraordinary achievements of these exceptional women of UNISA, we nod to this higher calling that we still stand together and persist in acknowledging the contribution of women, in dismantling the structures that hold them back, 
in building the village that will lead us to a better tomorrow. For African women have always been part of the struggle that impacted positively on the welfare of our communities, our country, and the continent. One of my favorite sisters, mentor, Amina Mama, reminds us that in African context, it is now well established that women were actively involved in the early to mid 20th century and nationalist struggles that led to the independence and establishment of modern nation states. I'm a grand, great, great grandchild of the Queen of Batokwa, Mantatis. I can attest to the fact that it's a lie that in Southern Africa, there were no women that were willing to hold hold code in order to protect their communities. The ensuing period, Amina Mama says, has seen women's activism continuing, but now being directed at state structures that women helped craft, which sometimes the state structures uh, often undermine or forget women. Colleagues, your contributions in this space reveals the significant role that education plays in re redressing the historical inequities that dictated that women or female child did not deserve to be educated. I'm so very proud of the nominees and wish each one of you well in your future. Thank you for inviting me and also making me a part of this community of celebration, of agitating for freedom, equality, but also of acknowledging that it is not always as easy as a woman leader and to take into counsel Professor Who, who, who reminded us that women should not be alone, that we shouldn't as leaders just be happy to be pretty in the office, that we should always work together in solidarity with others to ensure that our universities, our institutions, our communities live with dignity through knowledge, research, and engage scholarship. Galevoha, Nkosri, Tokran, thank you. Can I hear some relations for our prof, our VC? Thank you so much, Madam Principal and Vice Chancellor, Professor Linkabula. We appreciate your encouraging words. Thank you for congratulating our winners. Madam Principal, we see the support and commitment you have towards women agenda. As UWF, we want to say continue to be clothed with strength and dignity and be committed to your mandate without any fear of your future. Most importantly, never apologize for being a powerful woman. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now call our very own poet to come and seal what the VC has said. Miss Claudia Fratini, our UWF Expo member. The stage is yours, ma'am. Thank you so much. I hope everybody can re can hear me properly. Can yes, we can hear you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, it is it is always an honour to present a poem for the UWF, and especially on this very uh, poignant occasion of the Feroza Adams Memorial Lecture. Uh, I thank all the speakers and poets that came before me. Today's poem is a reflection and a meditation and a contemplation on what is happening around us as women. It's titled, Nothing Is As It Was. It has been a long winter, the cold, penetrating, bone-bare earth, frozen, 
barely warmed by the insipid sun dangling above a taunting, tainted blue sky. Everything is not as it seems. Inhale. In the space between, the space between, there is breath. Exhale. Whispers of what could be. Inhale. Listen, she said, drawing the first card. Exhale. Placing it on a table, a tree, but a table, or was it both? Nothing is as it seems. Inhale. The spiral. Old wisdom, she said. Exhale. Floating up, an escape from the two-dimensional prison of the card, swirling an incandescence of infinite light, blues, radiant cobalt blues, silver streams of starlit universes. It settled on her brow. Inhale. Remember the space between the space between. It has been a long winter, the cold penetrating bone bare earth, frozen, barely warmed by the insipid sun, dangling above an inverted, invisible sky. Nothing is as it seems. Exhale. Look, she said, as she drew the second card, placing it on the table. Inhale, flow. Be the water, she said. Exhale. In the space between, the space between, the image drifted down frozen waterfalls through rocky rivers, over lakes carried by powerful waves to settle on her right cheek. Inhale. It has been a long winter, the cold penetrating bone bare earth frozen, barely warmed by the insipid sun dangling over a lost sky of fading stars, the names of which no one recalls. The space between, the space between ears closing in. Exhale, we are almost there. Inhale, the breath comes long and hard. The hand reaches for the third enchanted card. Steady, exhale. An arrow spirals through the stillness. The humming fletch whizzing breaks invisible sound, roaring as it finds its target. Inhale, the hunter. Learn she whispered. The images are too fast, I wept. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Running, finding, returning. The honorable kill, she said. Exhale. A solitary silver tear rolled down her left cheek, following contours of a lived visage, the final symbol, settling amid a clearing of red dust. Inhale. As she smiled amid glistening light of birthing galaxies, the symbols danced an acknowledgement. Nothing is what it was, but everything is as it should be. Exhale. Thank you. Hala, 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 hala. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, May Fratini, as I put my camera on. Thank you. Thank you, uh, May Fratini, for the rendition. And um, we are reminded by Diana Marie Child when she says a woman is the full cycle within her. There is power to create there is power to nurture, and there is power to transform. Uh, moving forward with the program, I will now call the Vice Principal Research Innovation and Commercialization to, uh, to come and render the vote of thanks. Uh, Prof. Meiwa, the stage is yours.
Thank you. I have a confession to make. I never thought I would again enjoy this annual event in a similar way that I have in the Esther years. I'm actually reeling with enjoyment and excitement despite being in this office home on my own. Achieving gender equality is about disrupting the status quo, not negotiating it. So argues Pumzilim Lambunzuga. I'm going to be dropping names today. She was my teacher at Metric. Boys and girls, men and women, as we enjoy this event today, an event in which we bringing about generation equality, realizing women's right for equal future, I cannot but want to draw as I give this vote of thanks from my ex-teacher Pumzlim Lambunduga's statement that we cannot negotiate it. We've got to achieve gender equality and do so disrupting the status quo. Good morning. It's still morning, eight minutes before afternoon. For my responsibility in these few minutes I'm given, it's just to say thank you, Sebonga Arialibuha for the entire event. For me, sitting in this boardroom, home, office, stadium, since 10 to 9, a story has been written. I'm actually listening to this story, a story that we have got to, to thank the families of Feroza Adam, as well as Manya, Matoyke, my Charlotte, whom we're celebrating 150 years of um, existence since we were blessed with her. I give thanks to, to these families for having given us a reason to celebrate and that these memories that we're sharing the story that we've made, crafted today through a variety of the presentations, we are able to have this celebration because of this annual event and because of these families having allowed us to share these two icons. I want to say thank you to our partners, in gratitude, we express a partnership with the South African Women in Dialogue, uh, Salga. We even had earlier on from the Salga um, speaker. We've actually celebrate and thank all the our partners that we actually have been with. And we also want to, to acknowledge this partnership. Partnership, a number of our speakers have made reference to that partnerships are very important. And we don't take these partnerships for granted, including uh, the institute uh, that's named after Nehemiah. Okay. Program directors, without you, we will not have had this kind of an event, the manner in which you've managed it, moderated it, in the fashion that I know women get to do these things, to multitask and innovate in instances where technology wants to spoil our fun. Thank you to Tembe uh, Gantuli Mbamama. Thank you to Gidibone 
Tansha, and um, third program director, Sophie Mabaso, who worked behind us. Thank you for embracing and expressing the fact that we celebrate various abilities that we have, that we often mistook for disabilities. A story indeed has been crafted, and we've learned a lot from what we've heard this morning. Thanks to Dr. Sugaka for the welcome that you've expressed and shared with us, welcoming and really setting the context of what we've heard uh, this morning. My poets, wow. You know, I actually got shivering. I've got what we call in my language, skumba senkuk. You know, those palms that you have on your body and something inspirational comes along. And our poets have just done that, our women poets. Thanks to Kate Mafate, uh, thanks to uh, Dr. Slavati, Mapula Chubiani, and of course, the last poet who was who actually took us through meditation. Breathe in, breathe out. Wow, that's powerful. It's been inspirational. I applause you. I applaud you. Applause to you for all the poems that you've shared with us. Thanks, Eme Fratini. We actually have had colleagues who've um, assisted with reading the biographies. Stelling biographies, asserting that women are indeed a resource. Thanks, Matemula, the Secretariat of Sawit, for doing that. We really appreciate that work. When you made reference to the fact that indeed no women are left behind, and the speakers that we've had today have demonstrated that. We've had Sadly, she had to leave. Eme Flora Mabua Boltzmann. What I took fancy from what she said was that we've got to practicalize the inclusion of women, that let's put women in significant positions. Somehow, indeed, reiterating what my teacher, Pumzin Lambongo Nguga, actually has said, but let's not negotiate. I see love. I also want to thank the speech by Flora Mabua Boltman as she ended and left and promised us that the meeting she's going to, she's actually going to challenge uh, the inequalities and that she's promised. We're waiting, by the way, to learn more about what outcomes come out of the meeting that she went to. And also have to thank um, Sawit's representative, Metogompumdwane. She's actually my aunt. I said I'll be dropping names this morning. Um, she's made reference to appreciating relationships, the mutual benefits that we have, and the fact that what I took from her speech is the importance of embracing memories in a form of celebrating and expressing gratitude. And when she ended by being reference to the fact that the struggle and we also had um, my partner in crime, uh, Prof. Mackay, Veronica. Fellow Vice Principal of Teaching and Learning. Um, she's actually introduced speakers um, alongside with the colleague Eleon who did so. And she, you know, sharing that with such passion as Veronica will always do, noting women's contributions and also noting uh, the impactful thought processes that they actually have shared with us the activities that uh, we then got to learn about more when they delivered uh, their um, speech. Ambassador 
Nazi for General Ribadil. I mean, the fact that they've stayed this long uh, in this event, I'm just so humbled on behalf of UNISA, on behalf of uh, UNISA Women's Forum, and on behalf of, of my boss, the Vice Chancellor. We do not take for granted that such high profile uh, women who could have been elsewhere decided to be with us. Thanks, May Chancellor. Um, Nolita Dobongwana, um, also who shared with us a very moving, if actually calling us to act, decrying the fact that we celebrate the pull her down. I must actually stop and question that. The fact that we have even that expression. My analysis of it is always in this fashion. Look at who benefits when women at times, which are actually very few times, they don't support each other. We have varieties of examples in Bomagnano, in the Stockfeller, in this event we're having today where women hold hands, which is what they often do. The reason we have the homes that we have is because women hold hands. Thank you so much, Nolita Dabongano, for actually getting us to, to realize that, you know what, let's look elsewhere. Uh, we got our speakers to reflect on and remind us about the importance of our identities, the need for renewal, the reinventing, uh, the struggles that you continue to have, and the ills, of course, that you continue to to have, which are very sad, that is um, the gender-based violence. And then we got the president. I don't call her chairperson, and it's a bit like too weak for me. The president of UNISA Women's Forum came along and celebrated and listed all the good women that we have who've done sterling work, work that uh, that we celebrate as UNISA women. And what I'm actually taking fancy from, Memahano, is that we are celebrating a variety. I mean, we've added on, I like the fact that we recognizing all levels of uh, our, our women and the work that they do. And thank you so much for leading the UNISA.